Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Russell here. And if you've been watching the channel, you'll know that I think anyone who's investing in digital assets should absolutely be using a hardware wallet. And on the channel, we've covered hardware wallets in the past, like the Ledger Nano X, but today we're going to look at a hardware wallet that is definitely of the more premium variety. And this is the Grid Plus Lattice One. This hardware wallet comes in a completely unique form factor and it has a number of features and use cases that simply don't exist with other hardware wallets. So in today's video, we're going to be unboxing this unit right here. I'll be walking you through the setup process and at the end, we're going to talk about some more features and things you need to know if you're currently trying to decide between buying a Lattice One or one of its competitors like a Ledger or a Trezor. And if you wanna follow along with me, there's a link where you can get more information all about the Lattice One right down there in the description. And as a quick disclaimer, when I told Grid Plus that I was planning on making this video, they offered to send out this product for review, but I'll do my best not to let that influence my opinions and my thoughts in the way that I lay them out to you. First, let's take a closer look at what comes inside of the box. I'll take this off. It seems it slides up just like this. And oh, okay, there we have the product itself. This is the Grid Plus Lattice One. We'll slide the unit out and see if we can uh, see if there's anything else inside of this box. I'll place that right there and taking a closer look. It looks like there is some more inside of this box. You can see a closer look right here. This is your grid safe card. We'll talk more in a moment about what exactly that does. And it looks like there's actually some more instructional guides at the back here when we uh, open this up and get deeper inside. Now that I've got the box open, I can see it comes with roughly four components in the box. We've got the unit itself, of course, and we've got an ethernet cable so you can plug directly into your modem or router, but I believe the unit itself is Wi-Fi enabled, so I think this is not exactly a mandatory. And we've also got the power cord here, of course, and we've got the safe card. Now, the safe card is the most interesting thing, I believe, about the Grid Plus Lattice One that doesn't really actually translate over to other hardware wallets. The idea behind the safe card is that you should be able to use it to back up your seed phrase of your wallet and potentially if you have multiple safe cards, use them as different accounts or different wallets if you so choose. Or if you have multiple safe cards, you could also back up the same wallet to multiple cards so that you can store these in multiple different safe locations. Now with the supplied power cord, we'll just plug this in and get the Lattice One powered up. Should just take a quick second here and we should go into a boot up phase. And there we go, we've got the Grid Plus actually starting to boot up here. You'll go through this initialization phase where you'll see this load bar, but you only have to do this the very first time you power up your Grid Plus. Once you're through that initialization phase, you can see here we're able to actually start setting up our Lattice One, and it's very easy to go through this setup process, largely because this is a uh, touch screen. Uh, you'll notice on some of the competitor products like the, the Ledger, to navigate you actually have to press all of these, uh, these, these small buttons and sort of go one step at a time through the menus, but my guess is that with this Lattice One it's going to be a lot easier to set up and navigate because of the larger touch screen. The first thing you'll need to do is set it up on your Wi-Fi. Now, if you have your Ethernet cable plugged in, you likely won't get this step, but I'm gonna quickly go through here and get this connected to my local network. Next, you'll need to set up your device pin, make it something that you can remember because you'll likely be needing to unlock this Lattice One fairly frequently. Since this is a brand new unit out of the box, there's no wallet yet instantiated on the device. So we're gonna click Let's Go and set up our new wallet. Now we have a couple different options here. The first one is to generate a wallet, create a new one, restore one from a seed phrase or restore from a safe card. So in a worst case scenario, if anything were to happen to your Grid Plus unit and you still had your safe card from your previous one, then of course you could buy a new unit and add access all of your funds that way. But for the purposes of this video, we're going to generate a new wallet and you have the option to create a passphrase for this wallet. We're going to skip this step for now uh, and we're going through this finalization phase of our setup for our new wallet. Next, your Lattice One will prompt you with your 24 word seed phrase. Now I recommend you write this down and store it because this is what will be used to restore your Lattice if anything were to happen to the wallet. It's super important to keep this safe and only in hard copy. Don't keep this on uh, any sort of cloud store storage place because any uh, hacker could get uh, access to that information and access to the funds stored on that wallet that's secured by the seed phrase. Now, you're also going to be able to back up your wallet with your safe card, but I do recommend as a backup to also write down your seed phrase on a hard copy and store it in a safe place that only you know about. The next thing you'll see is this tamper mesh notice. Essentially, this is explaining to you that the uh, Grid Plus, if you were to ever take it apart, or if some other third party that was looking to gain access to your wallet took this apart in order to try to compromise the device, well, the Grid Plus is programmed to uh, no longer function if that were the case. So this is just saying, hey, don't open this yourself in order to try to service it or repair anything. 
then like I said, you'll be able to back up your wallet with a safe card and we're actually going to walk through that process today. So we're gonna start by clicking this start button and follow these instructions. It'll prompt us to find our safe card and then tell us to insert it into the lattice one, uh, just like you would insert into a debit card uh, reader uh, when you're purchasing something. You do the same with your safe card here. Again, some future use may be to actually pay with crypto uh, in the future if this could be later turned into a point of sale unit. Then it'll prompt you to create your new pin for this individual safe card. Once you set up your pin, you can then select yes when you want to back up your wallet and it will take a moment here to do so. Now that your setup is finished, you'll be directed back to this home menu where you can check in on your safe card addresses, manage your wallets, manage your permissions, and go through a various number of settings here um, that you can see right here. You can do software updates, check on the Wi-Fi status, change your PIN amongst a number of other features here. And if we go back to the main menu once more here, uh, you'll notice here that you can see and view your various safe card addresses. Now this does bring up the one uh, thing that we need to talk about with the, the Grid Plus Lattice One. It's only uh, effective with with uh, the Bitcoin network and the Ethereum network. This gives you the ability to secure both your Bitcoin addresses and your Ethereum wallet addresses with the Grid Plus Lattice One. Uh, of course, Bitcoin, you have the uh, the one asset Bitcoin to transfer back and forth while using this wallet. But uh, you may already know that with the Ethereum network, you have access to any of the uh, assets that are secured by the Ethereum network. This means any ERC-20 token, there are so many, uh, as well as NFTs and other digital assets that are, again, secured on the Ethereum network. And that gets into some of the differences between the Grid Plus Lattice One and the Ledger Nano X, two of the largest competitors in the hardware wallet space. The first and most obvious difference is, of course, the size of these hardware wallets. The Grid Plus Lattice One, of course, seems like it's designed to be in one location all the time because of its larger form factor, whereas the Ledger Nano X or the Ledger Nano S, which is even smaller, might be better to take around with you if you're more portable or if you're looking for something that's more portable. But of course, with this smaller form factor comes some downsides that are solved by the Grid Plus Lattice One. The fact that the Ledger Nano X's screen is so small, and the same goes for the Ledger Nano Nano S means that anytime you're interacting with a smart contract on the Ethereum network or any other chain, all of your contract data that you're double checking to make sure, hey, this is actually what the action I want to properly perform. When you're double checking that, you have to scroll through and only see a little bit of data at a time, and it's not the most legible on the ledger. Whereas with the Lattice One, anytime you're interacting with a smart contract, be it on the Ethereum mainnet or potentially a layer two like Arbitrum or Optimism, you can see all of the contract data right there on the screen, the, uh, the, the touch screen here. So you can scroll through that and double check that it's actually the transaction that you want to submit. On top of the various security measures that the Grid Plus Lattice One uses to make sure that your wallets are super secure, again, there's a link in the description if you wanna find out more. The other major difference between the Ledger Nano X and the Grid Plus Lattice One is this whole safe card system. And I think it's actually quite intuitive and very future-proof which with where the, the world may be going in the next decade or so. As digital wallets secured by the Ethereum network get more and more popular and more and more widely adopted, I think the safe card feature will be very handy. Imagine a world where you and both your friend have a Grid Plus on their desk and you don't want to bring your laptop, but for some reason you uh, need to make a transaction while you're at your friend's place. Well, you might be able to just bring your safe card and then you are the only one that knows your safe card pin so you can plug it into their Grid Plus. They can unlock the device for you and you can do any transaction you want. Uh, another potential future would be having uh, Grid Pluses as a different point of sale mechanisms at various stores. Say uh, a larger demand comes into place for people to buy uh, digital or buy uh, physical goods with cryptocurrency, uh, well then you could of course carry around maybe a, a wallet that has less funds on it, but more of your active funds for uh, physical purchases. Well, you could store that on a safe card and walk around to the various different points of sales that all have devices l much like the Grid Plus Lattice One. You can put in your, your, your smart or, or your safe card and then use that safe card to actually transact while you're out and about and don't have access to your home station where you would typically use and uh, sign transactions from. The other difference is, of course, the price. With the Grid Plus, you're paying for quite the premium product and premium security, and that is $349. And I believe this is listed in American, while over here for the Ledger Nano X, that's $159 Canadian. The conversion's a little bit wonky, but the point here is that the Ledger is a fair amount cheaper than the Grid Plus Lattice One. 
But in my eyes, what's more important than the retail price is the use case and how you're actually going to be using your device. If you're someone who just plans on buying some cryptocurrency, wants to store it in a cold storage wallet and then not touch it, not interact with it, not transact with it, then maybe the Ledger would be better for you because of the uh, the smaller UI and the lower price point. But here with the Grid Plus, I, I think uh, like especially for people like me who are constantly interacting with the Ethereum blockchain, maybe uh, uh, buying NFTs, interacting with smart contracts, uh, taking advantage of various DeFi protocols, well then you're going to be signing transactions very, very frequently. And that's the use case that I think the Grid Plus will most likely come in handy for because again of the large screen you can see through the contract data, double check it. And of course, it's just a lot more user friendly than tapping through the individual buttons on a ledger to go through various menus to get to where you wanna go. But that just about does it for my review and unboxing of the Grid Plus Lattice One. I recommend that you take a look at the link in the description if you want more details. Of course, there are a number of features we couldn't cover in today's video. And if you wanna read up more on the security features, with which there are many with the Grid Plus Lattice One, again, you can follow that link in the description. And if you decide to purchase with that link, it'll help support the channel as well. And of course, if you have any comments or questions, leave them for me down below in the comment section. Also in the description, there'll be a link to a Grid Plus's Discord channel, and they're very active in there. So if you need any support or have any additional questions that I may not be able to answer, they're extremely, extremely responsible, responsive and so easy to work with. So check out that Discord link down there as well. But with all of that said, thanks so much for watching everybody. I really hope this video has helped you out at least a little bit, and I'll see you next time.